Worldwide parent coach and conscious educator Sue DeCaro is on a mission to revitalize the joy in parenting. Welcome to Conscious Parents, Thriving Kids, a podcast designed to help parents all over the world create deeper connections with themselves and their children while overcoming life's daily parenting challenges. Listen in if you want to bring more laughter, love, and enjoyment to your home life. Welcome to Conscious Parents Thriving Kids, a place for all things parenting. I am your host, Sue DeCaro. In today's episode, I want to talk a little bit about connection, trust, and commitment. I think these are really important topics to think about when we think about conscious parenting. When I think back to my childhood and I reflect on parenting then and parenting now, I am amazed at the differences I see. The main thing that stands out for me in my own childhood is how we as kids entertained ourselves all the time. I do not remember the family coming together to watch movies, play games, or any type of day-to-day organized activity together. My neighbor and I, best friends, spent most of our weekends outside. To my recollection, my mom opened the door on the weekends, sent us out, until dinner when she rang the dinner bell or called for us. I lived on a farm, not in a neighborhood, so it was very safe and easy for my mom to call us, as it was she and my best friend's mom were the only moms in sight. When we were called, we ran. We did not say, no, please, five more minutes. We just need to finish our game or anything of that nature. We ran. It was time to go. Our time outside was up. Dinner was on the table, and of course, we were hungry. Dinner was enjoyed as a family, but without much child participation, outside of eating what was on our plate. My parents would talk about work, and my dad would share about his day with my mother. We sat mostly in silence. We ate the food that was put on our plate. The connection and time together were quite minimal. Even at bedtime, the amount of time spent was not necessarily fulfilling, especially for me, since I typically felt a lack of love from my parents. As the disconnection continued and I got older, I began to hide things from my parents. I began to become a bit of a rebel and would often lie. I won't get into all the details here about what the lies were, but the premise basically is that my parents knew very little about what truly went on in my life, nor did they ask. So if trouble ensued, there was always a way out to lie and to make it a good one. After a while, as a child, I got really good at this. So when I think back to all of this, I realized so clearly that this disconnection with my mom and dad was the leading factor in why I would tell lies. On the opposite side, the punishments were not fun at all. I was usually grounded. One year, I lost my privileges to participate in Halloween. To this day, I can still feel the utter sadness and the loss of something so important to me in my childhood. Halloween is a very big holiday for children. So I learned through the consequences and the lack of connection that truth-telling did not benefit me in any way. I lied to protect myself. How can we look at this differently today? Parents ask me this all the time. Connection, for one, is key. Our kids need to feel like they are seen heard, and valued for who they are every single day. This is not just by dropping them off at school, packing a nice lunch for them, and doing their laundry. True connection happens by seeing the child in front of you, learning about that child by listening and asking questions, and spending quality time with them. All children want their parents to see them for who they are, every child, rather than mold them into what we parents might want them to be. 
They want us to honor their likes and dislikes instead of pushing them into our likes and agendas. They want us to spend time getting to know them and what they are all about. Once we begin this process, the connection starts to strengthen. So if you want your children to come to you when things go awry, share the good, the bad, and the ugly with you, as some may call it, they need to know that you are there to listen and to help rather than to scold and to discipline. Learning takes place just by the mistakes our children make. Every mistake is a learning opportunity. Recently, one of my clients told me about her son getting caught in school with a few other boys writing something that was inappropriate and against the school's policy. The school called the parents. When the son finally told his mom, she said he had this look of shame on his face. Now, of course, we don't want our kids to feel shamed, but he had already learned, and this was part of his learning from this mistake. He knew he was wrong, acted out of a need for social approval and acceptance from his peers, and not from logical thoughts. The shame on his face and the discomfort in reporting this himself was all a part of the learning and growing. Our question to our children can be, what did you learn from this? Or how can you make amends for this mistake? We're all human and we all make mistakes. The keys to our children becoming comfortable enough to confide in us and talk with us as parents goes back to the connections, the openness, the trust and commitment we have in seeing them clearly, loving who they are and allowing them to learn and grow from mistakes instead of fearing the consequences and then lying. Connection, connection, connection. Thank you for joining me. Remember, every moment is a new moment for Conscious Connections. Thanks for listening to Conscious Parents, Thriving Kids. If you like what you heard, the best compliment you can give us is to share this podcast with a friend and be sure to give us some stars and a favorable review at Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in.